that you can remember this year, 2023. Oh, it has been difficulties, difficulties everywhere, wars, challenges. <laughs> what can you remember about this? Taxes. You remember about taxes? Blessings of God. Blessings of God. Uh, Susan? Correct. Oh, you are remembering about exams. The results are coming. <laughs> That's an achievement. When you say you have achieved so many things, including receiving from graduating, you have so much in his life. 2023, you remember graduation, you have graduated. Now you're supposed to do Yes. After graduating, who are you now? Yes, say yes.
place of work, in school, in churches, in a different organization, or maybe even relationships. There is nothing to write home about. When others are celebrating and praising God, you have nothing to praise God about. There is nothing good about this year. There is nothing good about your life. There is nothing good that you can talk about as part of achievement. You are almost giving up. You are almost saying, probably, God doesn't love me. Probably, I'm not meant to live. Probably, I'm supposed to live and transition to another world. You have had others giving and listing out their achievements. Even other countries, people have succeeded. Countries that have moved forward. But we are stuck here in Kenya with all the negative things people can talk about. And you are asking God, where are you? What can you do so that we can change our current situation? So the turn again makes a meaning to your life. In other words, going back makes a meaning to you. When somebody says turn, it means you are changing a course, you are changing direction from where you are moving, and you turn back. You change another to another direction. You change to another position. And today, we want to check Second Kings chapter 20, verses 5. What it means. Chapter 20, verses 5. Boya, the word of God says, Go back and tell Hezekiah, the ruler of my people, this is what the Lord, the God of your father, David, says. I have heard your prayer and seen your tears. I will heal you. Hezekiah was a king of Judah. Ezekiel was a king that has been described as the most obedient king to God. A king that had developed a very close relationship with God. A king who was more zealous compared to other kings. His father, the father who had handed over the power to him was the most despicable king the people of Judah had. He was wicked. He was worshipping other gods apart from the God of Israel. He was sacrificing to God. So he was a king that was not pleasing to God. And here comes Ezekiel who is the son of that king, Ahaz. And he changes the whole story. He changes the whole system. He became so zealous for the Lord than his father or any other king in Judah. He, he cultivated a close relationship with God. He destroyed the altar, the evil altar, the altar that you are worshipping Baal, he destroyed them. He destroyed the altars of the pagans. He destroyed their temple where his father used to worship other gods. And two, he did open the temple of Jerusalem. During his father, the temple where the true God was being worshipped had been closed. The doors had been nailed. The doors had been closed. But when Hezekiah came in, 
He opened the temples of Jerusalem. He cleaned the place. He repaired it in the temple. He reinstated the Levitical priests. He returned the people, the priests, back to the temple. He reinstated the Passover. It became a national holiday. He was successful in everything he did. Praise God. That is in the year. He contributed to the relationship with God. He was able to break down all the evil cultures. Just the way it was told by God. Break, bring down the altars of your father and raise the altars to me, to God. So that the power of God can move. That's what Ezekiel did. When he entered into the throne, the kingship of Israel, of Judah, he was able now to walk close to God. He was able to return God back to Israel so that the people could worship the true God. In other words, there are many things that have happened in 2023. You could be having negative reports about 2023. 2023 probably has not been favorable to you. While others are not in blessings, the people have graduated, you have not graduated. The people who have finished, you have not finished. The people who have gotten employment, you have not gotten any employment. The people who have gotten promotion in the place of work, as for you, you have not gotten any. So 2023 to you has been an evil year, has been a year of desperation. And today, there is nothing good you can write about 2023. It is an evil year to you. It is not a blessing to you. In other words, you as a Christian, you don't have any testimony. And you are crying to God, what can I do different so that I can be able to succeed in 2024? This being the last day of the year, when you check your resolution and maybe you have made only one or two resolutions, but most of your resolution have not been fulfilled. You are casting your vote. You are thinking about raising other altars apart from raising the altars to God. When you don't worship the true God, it means you are worshiping a different God. When you don't worship God, or you don't raise the true altars, you are having altars which are evil. Which are demonic. You know, altars is where a human being meets the divine, the spiritual. Altars is a platform where a Christian meets God. God releases power from heaven to the altar, and it's from the altar that we are able to be blessed. And because it is a platform where the spirit meets human being. It can be an evil spirit, it can be a holy spirit. And unless you are rooted in the word of God, you might end up having an altar which are demonic. Altars that are not pleasing to God. Maybe it could be a relationship. It could be an altar. Probably it is being swayed by the altar of the enemy. And if you want to know the heart of the enemy, is when you feel like going against the world, rebelling against the world. You are having force which you cannot explain that pushes you to do things contrary to the Bible. You should be able to understand that the altar of the enemy, that's an evil altar, being a platform where the spirit meets human being, where God meets human being. The spirit will be evil, will be godly. So, to 
draw the line is to see where are you being pushed to. Are you being pushed to go against the type of God? Are you performing things that are not pleasing to God? Is there a testimony about your salvation? Or when people look at you, they see, ah, if that is God, then I would love to stay without that God. If people are testifying against your God because of your actions, then you should be able to know you are worshipping the wrong God. Your altars are being fooled by demons, by the evil spirit, which they are supposed to be broken. And today is an opportunity for us to be able to reflect on our life. You know, it is so disheartening that you remain in salvation. And when you die, you die in the hands of the enemy. You can testify about being saved for many years. But the thing that I want us to understand is you need to be sure of the altar you are standing on. Which altar are you standing on? Who is playing that altar? Who is governing that altar? Who is giving power to that altar? Is it God or is it God? Which God are you worshipping? We are told that the relationship the Hezekiah is cultivated with God gave him success. Maybe your failures are caused by this answer. And especially where a problem repeats itself day in, day out, year in, year out. You should be able to understand that's an answer. And when you face the answer of God, it's supposed to break that altar that you're going through. It could be addiction. You know, there are different kinds of addiction. And these addictions, in most cases, are split by altars. It could be a bad thing. Maybe people from your area or people from your bloodline, they are known to be. Uh, over certain, over certain belief. Maybe they practice witchcraft. Maybe they believe in other gods apart from this god. And you know from your heart that there is never a time that you have ever worshipped God. Because when you are born, you are born in a family that believes in other things. So your altar that you are upon is an altar that opposes God. And you find that when you are trying to remove that altar, that altar fights back. When you are trying to take it, worship the true God, you find yourself going outside the perimeter of God. You have gotten self, but when you are moving towards salvation, Towards success, you find yourself going to another direction. Then understand the altar is at play and is fighting the altar of God. And this day, that is the first of December, is the day you want to say if there is an altar that is leading you differently from the right uh, path of God, it has to be broken. We want to get into 2024 with the power of God, with the altar of God, with the true God, with the true salvation, with the true victories that come from God. We know the blessings of the Lord, they have no sorrow. But the blessings from the enemy, they have all things to regret about. So Hezekiah was able to cultivate a good relationship with God. He became zealous. He was born in a family where the father was worshipping other gods. He was sacrificing to other gods. But he made a decision when he became a king 
cultivate close relationship with God. And it is possible even for you to cultivate close relationship with God. Doesn't matter where you are coming from. Doesn't matter which family you are coming from. Doesn't matter which area you are coming from. Even if it is an area that people know is for witches, it is possible for you to stand up and cultivate the relationship with God. Cultivate the God relationship. Become zealous for God. Destroy all the altars that are from the family. And that's why today we are saying, come again. It's the second chance God is giving us. Ezekiel, after cultivating, after making good altar, after raising an altar to the Lord, Ezekiel, after reinstating the Levitical priesthood, after reinstating the Passover celebration, becoming successful, still there was a challenge, there was a crisis that hit him. And the first crisis that hit Ezekiel was being attacked by Assyria. Another country attacked his country. And because he had cultivated the good relationship with God, he was able to make a very good prayer. A prayer to God. And when he made that prayer, he was able to visit Prophet Isaiah to inquire of the Lord. What do I do in this situation? When you raise and cultivate good relationship with God, when you raise an altar to God, you have an opportunity to approach that altar and ask us that altar to fight for you. The sickness that you go through, the Zekiah himself was told by Isaiah, put your house in order because you are dying. But because Hezekiah had cultivated a good relationship. He raised an altar to the Lord. He was able to turn around and cry to God. I have been good. Chapter, uh, chapter 20, Second Kings, verses 2 says. Uh, let us start from verse 1. In those days, Ezekiel became ill and was at the point of death. The prophet Isaiah, son of Amos, went to him and said, This is what the Lord says. Put your house in order because you are going to die. You will not recover. Verse 2. Ezekiel turned his face to the wall and prayed to the Lord. Remember, Lord, how I have walked before you faithfully and with wholehearted devotion, and have done what is good in your eyes. And Hezekiah went bitter. Verse 4. Before Isaiah had left the middle court, the word of the Lord came to him. Turn again. Go back and tell Hezekiah, the ruler of my people, this is what the Lord, the God of your father, David says, I have heard your prayer, and seen your tears, I will heal you. So, if you try to agree, you have cultivated a good relationship with God, and you fall into a trap of sickness, of poverty, of any type of challenge, you have permission to go back to God and cry. And tell God, I've been faithful in 2023. And for that reason, I am praying 2024 to be good to me. Doesn't matter the challenges of God's home. Doesn't matter the beatings and the hurting that are going through. Today, you have an opportunity to tell God. I've been faithful to you in 2023. Even if I'm not enjoying what you have said for me, I want 2024 to be successful to me. 
I want 2024 to be prosperous for me. I want 2024 to continue working closely to me so that I can be able to succeed in every plan that I have. Everything that I set my eyes on, I succeed. Today is an opportunity for you to cry like Ezekiel before the Lord and say, I've been faithful to you. I've worked faithfully with you. I've served you wholeheartedly in 2023. It is now my opportunity to be able to receive. It is now an opportunity to turn again. Let us ask God the way Isaiah was told, turn around, go back, and tell him I've had his prayers. Praise God. Today, as I'm standing before you, I want to be told by God, turn again and visit one of your members. <coughs> Visit one of your sons, one of your daughters. We seek and pray for him so that he can be able to receive the healing. He's crying for an opportunity and he doesn't have it so that he can be able to get it. I want to be said to you, to your family, please turn again to that family. Turn again to that woman. Turn again to that kid. Turn again to this person. Because I've had his prayers. That's the essence of this day of the last year, the last day of the year of 2023. God to be able to send his angel to you, to be able to come and say, This is my son, this is my daughter who has worked with me closely, who has been very faithful for the whole year, but now he is in problems, but now she is in problems. Please. Go and tell her I've had his prayers for her prayers. It's an opportunity for us to kneel down before God today and tell God. You have seen what you have gone through. There is nothing good to write about the year. But please listen to our prayer about 2024 so that it can become successful. If it is a fair relationship, Lord can revive that relationship. If it is about your sickness, God can heal that sickness. If it is about employment, God can give you employment. If it is a company that is collapsing, God can give you an opportunity to revive that company. To be able to come back and have good life again. It's an opportunity that we can cry to the Lord so that He can listen to our prayers. The sin that you are in. Ask for forgiveness. Tell God, the only land last week, Father, I have done wrong to you. Please forgive me. Let us become like that lost son and ask for forgiveness so that the Lord can be able to restore us again. So the Lord can be able to have another time to have fellowship with so if you have time, read about Ezekiel. Read about how faithful he has been to the Lord. That he could be able to turn and pray to the Lord. And the Lord can tell Isaiah before he disappears. Go back. I've had the prayer of that guy. I've had the prayer of that king. I've had the prayer of that boy. I've had the prayer of that girl. I've had the prayer of that woman. Please turn out. Go back. And tell him or her, I've heard his prayers. I've heard his cries. I've seen his tears. I've seen her tears. Please go and tell him. Ezekiel was told I've had it 15 years. 15 years, you can do so many things. If you are to die and God gives you 10, 15 years, there are so many things you can do. You can build the houses in that 15 years. If you are a young man and you have been 15 years, you can manage, and by the time you are dying, you are going to have a son in 15 years. There is a lot you can do in that 15 years. There is a lot you can do about many things in your life. If God can stop death because of my personalness, then He can stop anything 
in your life. He can stop diseases. He can stop death. He can stop poverty. He can stop break, break, uh, breaking of a marriage. He can stop what the devil is bringing to your door. He can stop all the failure that you have and can put your trust in the Lord. So if there is any evil that you are witnessing now, that is the cause of the problem that you are going through, please break them down. Break those altars and raise the altar of the Lord. And the Lord will be able to fight on your behalf. Many battles that you go through, they are spiritual. By the time you see them in the physical, they started a long time ago. In other words, you can say, what happens in the physical is delayed. It's already seen in the spirit. Things maybe they have been seen maybe two years ago that are going to, to, to find them today. They already have in the spirit. So we can be able to ask God to fight on our behalf with their altar. And now we have an altar that is called King's Transformation Center in Kenya. It's an altar that God has given us that we can use for our battles. We can use for our success. We can use to destroy all the others of the enemy. God has given us an altar to fight on our behalf in the spiritual realm. Many battles are won and lost in the spiritual realm. By the time they reach here, just to the it is still not going to happen. So once you have a good altar, if you have an altar that can be able to fight for you, then most of the battles will be won. As for you, keep on enjoying good life, keep on enjoying victories, you keep on enjoying good uh, health and many other things. That should you get into problems, then you are allowed the way Ezekiel was allowed to pray and God to listen in this problem and change the course of your life. Praise the Lord. We want our God to bless us. But also we need to play our parts. What how we play our parts is by raising altar. The altar of salvation. The altar that was created by Jesus on the cross. Where he shed his blood for you so that you don't go. Without the blood of Jesus, you will not be able to see God. But through the blood of Jesus, we are able now to claim salvation. And that is the ultimate altar that was raised by Jesus Christ so that we can be able to get saved. So an altar that was raised by Jesus Christ was to exchange so that we can have life and have it in another. For God so loved in the world that he gave his only begotten son. He, that is begotten son. That's an altar. Jesus Christ an altar. He gave us an altar with Jesus Christ so that we don't get lost. So we build an altar so that the Lord can fight for us. When you are asleep, when you are traveling, when you are doing other things, as long as you know that your altar is active. Your altar is hot, your altar is able to fight for you, there is nothing to worry about. There are many things we can succeed in doing, but it's not the altar. We have said about our lifestyle. There are things that are suffering us because of altars. Altar is a spirit, dark spirits, to give you problems to convince you to change your blessings into sadness, into sorrow. But once we know that Christ died for us and we made an ultimate altar and then we make our altar to be hot, to be active, to be alive, then we have nothing to worry because that altar will take us to heaven. That altar will make us see God. So Hezekiah was able to defeat the army of Assyrians. 
by killing 185,000 soldiers without raising a weapon. The angel of the Lord at night killed 185. And the following morning, when the Assyria found that 185 soldiers had been killed overnight, they ran away. And initially, they were beating their chest that Hezekiah can do nothing about them. And his God that he trusts will not be able to save him. If he was not able to save other countries, even him as, as a king of Judah will not be saved. But Hezekiah prayed, and God through Isaiah said, Don't be afraid. Those guys will not succeed. Let us put our battle to God. However much we are going through, however much battle, the, the battle, the challenges that we are going through currently, doesn't matter the scale. Once we put our trust in the Lord, then we should be able to enjoy the victories of Him. So 2023 is coming to an end, but it's coming to an end with good reports, with good news today, that we can cry to God and God can be able to listen to He can change 2023, 2024 to become completely different and we succeed. And we get what we are still to get in 2023 because we have cultivated a good relationship. We have raised our altar to fight for us. So our prayer is starting from tonight, midnight, when people will be crying, New Year, New Year, as for us, we will be crying to receive blessings from God. When people are crying wherever in the world, as for us, we will be crying to receive the blessings of the Lord. Receiving the answers that have been prayed. We will be receiving the blessings, the victories. We will be receiving the riches. We shall be receiving the wealth. We will be receiving the salvation. So that we can become successful. We want to have a testimony from tonight in the midnight that God has done it. All the failures become victories. All the challenges God fight for us. We should be able to say hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. God has done it. He is able. He has done it. He has done it to Hezekiah. He will be able to do it today to us. So let Isaiah, let the man of God, let the angel of God turn again for your sake. Let that angel who is living you go to his facts, go back. Because I've had the prayer. So tonight, may that angel of the Lord turn again. May that uh, angel tonight in the midnight be told, be instructed by God, turn again. Because my pastor, I've had his prayers. I've had, he has been suffering from sickness for a long time. Turn around and tell him I've had, and he is healed. He is. Recover. Well, you go. With all those words of encouragement, encourage yourself. The word of God has encouraged you. Now encourage yourself that these are your blessings. Receive them in the name of Jesus. Start running with those blessings. Start running with the victories. Start running with what God has given you. So we thank God for 2023. As we are saying goodbye 2023, we are welcoming 2024 with gladness, with peace. So that your results will be good. <laughs> Those who have finished, yeah. life will be good. Things will change for the better. Those who are sick, may God give you peace. Those who are poor, may God give you wealth. Those who are hopeless, may God give you hope. And may the Lord bless us, all of us, as we welcome them to the hope. God bless you, and guide you for the whole week, guide you from midnight to the whole year, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen.